Ever since I got out of the hospital for chronic health problems, my husband has been introducing me to games every evening. One game used to be about doing things while my eyes are blindfolded, involving puzzles, Rubik's cubes, shaped objects, etc. We take turns to do it just for entertainment. A couple of days ago, he was trying to get me to sign papers while wearing a blindfold. I refuse to do it because he never lets me take a look at what I'm signing, neither before nor after. He says he was just trying to see if I could leave the same signature every time I signed, but I couldn't help feeling uncomfortable. I told him I didn't want to play this game unless and until he showed me the papers first. He said, never mind then, and stopped bringing it up. Last night, he tried to convince me to give it a try and even volunteered to go first. I asked if he would show me what I was going to sign, and he made a face and said, no, it's the rules and I should respect them. So I refused, and he kept on about how I kept acting worried and suspicious for no reason. He said I don't trust him, and he was hurt by finding that out now after everything we'd been through. So we argued, and I told him to drop it and not bring it up again, period. He was mad despite saying it was no big deal. He was obviously upset with me and kept talking about how I didn't trust him and that I was out of line to assume or suspect anything from him like this. I might be paranoid, but I couldn't help it. I think I was the idiot to him after he stood by my side when my own family didn't even visit. I might be the idiot for giving him the impression that I don't trust him and hurting his feelings. Not the idiot. The fact that he won't let you see your signature is a huge red flag. I'm concerned that all the games he introduced you to were just a way of conditioning you to believe the signature is innocent. OP, please be sure you tell a trusted person what has happened. Perhaps an attorney can help you draft a document that says anything you did sign since you left the hospital was not signed under your own free will. Also, your husband needs to know that other people are familiar with these games he's been playing. That was my exact thought as well. OP's husband was conditioning her. Once he thought he had her sufficiently conditioned, he brought up signing things. I mean, who does this? What kind of game is this? It's definitely sus. OP, this is highly suspicious. Obviously, he wants you to sign on something important. Financial documents, loan, will, property, divorce papers. The list could be endless. Do not sign on anything blindfolded. I would add, do not sign on any blank paper from now on. A fun challenge would be doing it on a post-it note, not on something that can be described as papers with actual text on it. That's a secret. The closest I can come to benefit of the doubt would be some surprise like those idiots who act like they're cheating while planning a proposal, though I'm struggling to come up with a positive surprise that would require her signature. See, if he were smarter, he would have started with other words. Marshmallow, Mississippi, banana. That would be funny. Then later asking for a signature would be less sus. Or just doing it for fun and never asking for a signature would be the normal thing. My art teacher had us draw with our eyes closed. It turned out really neat. I drew a horse. Kind of Picasso-y. The game might have been harmless, but not letting OP see the papers or the result of this game is strange. Not the idiot, but ask to see those papers. They exist. Do not take no for an answer. If you see those papers, you might not decide to divorce. If you don't see them, get a divorce. Write a random name huge in the middle of the paper. If he gets mad, something's up, because if it's just a game, there wouldn't be an issue. You need to tell your doctor what's happening. My 24 female, husband 24, and I are visiting my family. My husband, kids, and I were getting ready to go to our room for bed when my parents started acting really awkward, like something was off. I asked them what was wrong, and my mom quietly told me that my husband should sleep on the couch in the living room. I was a bit shocked because, why? Apparently, my dad doesn't feel comfortable, so I called her and my dad weird and told my husband to ignore them. We finally put our kids to sleep and are getting ready to sleep when my mom barges into the room while we're changing and says she doesn't want us in the same room alone in her house. 
My husband is freaking terrified at this point because he was in the middle of changing. So he leaves for the couch. And my mom says she's sorry, but she's not in the mood to deal with my dad's complaining all night. I pointed out that my younger sister, 21, and her husband have slept in the same room at their house multiple times, and she's never said anything. And she goes, well, your husband's white, so your dad feels weird. I was over it, so I said, fine. I got up at like 4 a.m. to drink some water, and I saw my husband wide awake just lying on the couch. He said the couch was uncomfortable, which, yes, it is. So I sat down next to him, and we both accidentally fell asleep. I woke up later to my mom freaking out. She was whisper yelling so she doesn't wake up my dad and asked if we're that codependent on each other that we can't spend one night alone. I tried explaining that it was a mistake, but she kept calling me disrespectful and said I was selfish, etc. I was upset, but my son called for me, so we ended our conversation. Now I'm wondering if I really am the idiot in this situation. My mom says I am because I was selfish, disrespectful, and completely disregarded how difficult her life would have become if my dad had found us. The whole thing is that it was an accident. I'm 24 and my dad is being weird. And my sister's husband doesn't have to do this. So why does mine? Am I the idiot? Edit. My family and I are South Asian. Not the idiot. What? What kind of shenanigans is this? I don't see why your dad has any issues with you sleeping in the same room with your husband. You guys have kids, so clearly sex has happened. And why is it any different that he's white? Do they treat your kids differently because they're half white? If they do, you need to step up and protect your children from your bigoted parents. And step up for your husband too. Seriously, if this were me, I'd be packing up my family and going to stay in a hotel for the remainder of the visit and then rethink any future visits from here on out. They are married and expected to sleep apart. And for what? The color of her husband's skin? Have they always been like this? Or is this something that OP is just learning about their parents? You are the idiot, not for sleeping on the couch, but for standing up for your husband against the blatant discrimination shown here. Plus, your mom stormed in when you and your husband were changing, which your husband clearly said he felt awkward about. OP leave the house and refused to come back or visit without getting an apology to your husband and clear rules that are equal for you and your sister. Excuse me? You are adults married to each other with two children and your father can't handle that you are still all of these things while in his house. My God. And somehow, your mother's responsible for enforcing his ridiculous rule? Oh, and if he gets upset, that's her fault. So your father is an idiot and your mother has become emotionally immune to it from years of trying to survive such raging idiotry. Good grief. Maybe this is your cue to create a bit of distance here or stay in a hotel or invite them to your house and have father sleep on your couch. My teen female, brother 18, brings his girlfriend 18 to our house almost every day after school. I go to tutoring three days a week and on these days that I come home later, I frequently find that things in my room have been moved and sometimes even missing. My brother rarely comes into my room, so I know it's not him. So I suspect that it's his girlfriend. I told him to tell his girlfriend not to touch my stuff, and he seemed offended that I would accuse her. My best friend had given me a box of chocolate for my birthday, and I remember very clearly putting it in the drawer next to my desk. The next day I had tutoring, and when I got home, I saw that it was gone. I, of course, assumed that it was his girlfriend. There was literally no one else in our house. I confronted her directly and asked if she could please return what she took and not go into my room again. She became super defensive and said that she didn't know what I was talking about. I asked if she could just dump out the contents of her bag and she started crying, which made my brother yell at me. Finally, she admitted to taking the chocolate and she pulled it out of her bag and threw it across the floor. Unfortunately, it managed to slide underneath the railing of the stairs and exploded on the first floor. I asked her about the other missing stuff, and she admitted to all of it. I said, stay away from my room, Tubby, which caused her to bawl as I've never seen anyone her age do before. My brother then told me off and said I should apologize to her. 
I asked, why should I apologize to a thief? And I went into my room. She hasn't come over since that happened. I don't know what's going on exactly, but I don't really care. My brother said that she's insecure and has low self-esteem. She's quite overweight and that what I said was completely uncalled for. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. A grown woman sneaking into a child's room and stealing things is low. If you haven't told your parents, you need to. She obviously can't be trusted and shouldn't be allowed in the house. And your brother's balls have been stolen too, if he's still defending her. I wouldn't say that calling her Tubby is very nice, but your brother's girlfriend is seriously audacious. If she thinks she can come into your place and just move stuff and steal it, I can't even believe she thinks that is okay. Your mother needs to check her jewelry box. Nah, unless OP's mother has lollipop rings and chocolate medallions, her jewelry box is probably safe from the tubby bandit. OP, definitely tell your parents. She should not be in your house. Your brother is an idiot. You don't owe her an apology. Yes, it was a low blow to call her that, but her stealing repeatedly is the actual problem here. My son, teen, is autistic and very blunt. You ask him a question and he tells the truth. It's never something I've tried to correct. I don't think it necessarily needs correcting. However, it really upsets some family members. The biggest recently was my brother and his wife are having a baby, and she mentioned wanting to name the baby Michaela Hay, which is a mouthful. She then asked our opinions. My son told her it was spelled weird and didn't like it. She got super upset and started crying. I don't think he did anything wrong. She asked a question and got an answer. He kind of shrugged it off and said he wanted to go home. We went home. That annoyed them even more. It's been a few tidbits. People asking about clothes and hair. He's always honest. With the whole baby thing, everything seems much tenser. Because of that, now whenever someone asks a question, he asks them if they want him to lie or not. They don't like this either. My brother contacted me telling me I need to discipline my son when he's rude and teach him that being truthfully kind and just being truthful is different. I'm not sure how to explain that one. I disagree. He realized they were getting upset, so now he clarifies before he answers. It's working out well for him. My husband appreciates it a lot more, lol. This is obviously devolved in a fight because why wouldn't it in this family? Usually arguments have at least some form of a split but with this one, it's just me against them, which makes me second guess myself. So, am I the idiot? You are the idiot. You're raising him with the perception that social niceties don't matter, and you're doing him a huge disservice. You're failing him as a parent, and you're a huge idiot for letting your hangups about how things should be keep you from raising your son for how the world is. The situation you describe will be repeated again and again in your son's life, and he's going to find it hard to fit in and keep friends if he's unable to wrap his head around something as simple as the social white lie. It doesn't matter his diagnosis. Society doesn't give a crap. Help him by equipping him with the tools he needs instead of dooming him to social failure because it makes you feel better somehow. Everyone's the idiot here except your son. They, as his family, need to be more understanding. You as his mother, are failing him if you don't help teach him how to exist in a world he doesn't move comfortably in. Teach him appropriate coping mechanisms, of which, do you want me to lie, is not one in most cases. If he asks his boss a question like that, he will get ridden up or fired. Not the idiot. Your brother and sister-in-law are idiots for saddling a poor child with that name. It will be spelled wrong for all eternity. Can you imagine having to give that name to someone verbally? Jesus, it would take several minutes to walk them through it. I'm not on any kind of spectrum, and that name would definitely make me be equally as honest. So my husband and I have a baby daughter. We didn't tell either side of the family about the pregnancy. Both sides were told after my daughter got out of the hospital. My husband brought the idea of hiding the pregnancy after I had two panic attacks about telling our families. I was worried that I would get everyone's hopes up and Miss Carrie like the last time. The only people who knew outside of us were my boss, his boss, and our doctor. We weren't going to post pictures of her 
or announce her birth until after both of our families got to see her. We sent both sides pictures of her and asked that they wait until we announced on social media. Not an hour after receiving pictures, my mother-in-law posted them. I let that slide. My family didn't mind not knowing. They were just happy about the new baby. His family was furious that we hid our pregnancy. They were upset that they didn't get to do a gender reveal and baby shower. But don't get me wrong, they are happy about our daughter. They love her to death, but I don't think they're ever going to stop telling me about how I hurt them and how could I be so selfish to rob them of the wonderful joys of pregnancy. In a couple of weeks, my daughter will be turning one. My daughter's the only grandchild currently, and my mother-in-law is dying. As her dying request, she has asked that since we didn't have a gender reveal or baby shower, we should throw a big birthday party for my daughter's first. I shut this down immediately. My daughter is a global situation baby that has never really interacted with people outside of the household. It took her a good 30 minutes before she let my parents touch her when we saw them for the new year. She has seen my parents way more often than this because we live closer to them and she still reacts like that. So imagine trying to do a birthday party for her with 20 plus people she doesn't really see. I can tell you the only thing she would do is bury herself in my chest. My mother-in-law is now upset and his family is now angry. My husband, because he loves his mother dearly and she's dying, said that maybe we should just do the party and get it over with and if anything happens, we'll handle it. I told him that it's not happening because I'm not forcing my daughter into a situation where she'll be uncomfortable just for the sake of others. And two, it isn't we who will handle it. It will be just me. I will be the one to deal with an inconsolable infant because in a new situation like that, she won't let him touch her. I will have to deal with family who doesn't understand boundaries, trying to touch or hold her, which would only upset her more. My husband agreed, apologized, and dropped it. But I'm still the idiot at the end of the day because I hid the pregnancy and I refused to carry out the dying wish of a grandma who wants to celebrate the life of at least one of her grandchildren before she passes. You are the idiot. Okay, it's your choice, but you are not going to harm or traumatize a one-year-old by having them around a few new people. Not at all. Even if the baby cries at first and is uncomfortable, they will be okay. Heck, childhood is actually mostly filled with new experiences, many of which take getting used to. At the end of the day, it's your choice, but to try to use an argument that it would harm your baby is somewhat dishonest. Unless there is some other compelling reason and you just don't want to grant a dying wish, do it for the sake of family. Agree. She's raising a child who will develop an attachment issue. Children need to have the opportunity to be challenged and learn how to explore these situations safely. Instead, she's letting her anxiety determine what social and development opportunities her child has. This can lead to anxious children and anxious adults. You are the idiot, OP. Your obligation to your child is to prepare her, not shelter her. Or worse, use her to shelter yourself. So what if she buries herself in your chest? Laugh it off, stroke her hair, and keep going. It's your mother-in-law's last birthday with your daughter. She wants to celebrate life as she's staring at death. She wants her family. I don't think that's unreasonable. You are making something about you when you could be teaching your daughter to make it about someone else.